This beautiful dog here is Echo, who is seven months old, seven month old puppy. Now she is a Border Collie, or, uh, or excuse me, Australian Shepherd mm -hmm. mix, we're not sure. Um, and she likes to run. We have an electric fence outside. Now, one of the things that I find for a lot of people with an electric fence is they start using it right away. Now, this technique that I'm gonna go over is to teach the dog to respect the flag and where the boundary is, if I can show, um, without actually needing an electric, an e-collar. I'm not a big fan of e-collars because it's using negative reinforcement. I wanna train the dog to move away from this. So I haven't done this for a while, so we'll see how we do. I have a clicker here. I'm gonna use the clicker to indicate when the dog does the thing that I want. So first thing I wanna do is get the dog to used to approaching, seems counterintuitive, but approaching the flag. So what I do is I put it there. Now she is, she's already kind of been somewhat trained in kind of a confusing way. So she is associates the flag as kind of a negative. It was hard to get her even to come over here at first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the treat right there. And I say, and I click the second she touches the treat. Now, if you notice, I'm moving the flag a little bit further away each time. So this is, again, the difference. I'm using positive reinforcement as opposed to negative reinforcement. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to practice this in the house for quite a while before we actually get to outside, like at least a week. So now what I'm doing is, like I said, I'm moving it further and further away from her so she has to travel to it, and then she moves away. Okay, so this is the first stage, and what I would have you do is about seven to ten treats, and just do this exercise. Get a clicker, every time she goes over, click, she gets a treat. There's no consequence, there's no, I'm not outside, there's not a lot of distractions. It's, I go to the flag and I get the treat. The next stage is, once you've gotten to her where she goes to the treat, goes right away, which she's already picked up on, but you just want a lot of reinforcement. Um, well, let's see, let's see. we'll see if we can get to the next stage. So what we want to do is condition her so that she sees that flag. She immediately goes over to the flag on her own. Come here, sweetheart. Echo. So now I'm going to try to be a little bit sneaky here. Now this is why we want to repeat this a lot. This I'm trying to do this in a video. This is real time. I'm not one of those guys that actually teaches the dog and then films it after the dog knows how to do it. So this is probably why those guys teach the dog first and then film it afterwards because it looks better on camera. But we were in a real world situation. There we go. So now, the second stage is we want her to go to the object, touch it with her nose, but then she has to come back to me to get the treat. So we're using classical conditioning to condition her to move away from the flag and get rewarded for moving away from the flag. Now, It's like, I'm no dummy. I know that you have it in your hand and it's not there. This is why the first, for a week, we're just putting the flag there. Every time she goes to it, we click when she takes it with her nose. So the second stage, I'm just going to kind of describe this because, again, this is probably not going to be the best footage because she's just still learning. So we want to do it here, and we're doing this inside because there are no, there are far less distractions. We want to do it without the other dog present because the other dog, uh, Cooper, is not really a runner. She is the runner. He pretty much just kind of follows and does what she does. She runs, he runs, he, she stays, he stays. So if we can get her to stay, I'm pretty sure we're going to have him covered. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you guys. She yeah. only follows him. Okay, the guardians kind of looked at each other, so I want to make sure. I, I just want to make sure that he agreed with that. Okay, cool. So basically, once we've gotten to this point where the dog will come over and take the treat. Now, right now I'm doing this is what we call static. It's on the floor. It's not moving. Eventually, I want to go like this and have her go over and touch it with her nose. So she understands every time I touch it with her nose, I get it. Now, I'm putting the treat on it initially to give her incentive to go there. Eventually, we want her just to go and uh, touch it with her nose even without the treat there. Um, that's why we practice it a lot. So the second stage is we're going to move it farther away from her. She goes over and touches it with her nose, and then we click. And then when she comes back to us, we give her the treat and click again. And we're gradually going to move ourselves further and further away from the flag. 
So we're conditioning her, like I said, to move away. The next stage will be to go outside and have her on a long lead, which you guys have like a 16 foot lead. So what we wanna do is we wanna recreate the situation outside, but now there's a lot of distractions and that's why we're using a lead. So if the dog does get distracted or go somewhere else, we can call her over. So we're gonna basically do the same exercise outside, just get close enough where she can walk over with the lead and still be on the fence, goes over, she touches it with her nose and comes back to me and gets the treat and I click. Is this confusing to the dog because there's white flags out there that she technically can't touch with her nose because she'll get shocked at the touch, won't she? Isn't that too close? Well, right now they would be, yeah. Well, this is why I got orange flags when I talked on the phone. I, was, I had white flags in my hand. I went and got orange flags. So I would take those flags down and put these up about a foot inside where that line is. You have a lot of property, so the extra foot's not going to kill you. But this way, we, she probably will know where they're at. Take them down for, because you're not using the leash, the, those anyways. Take them down for about a week or two while you're doing this inside. Then go put the orange ones up about, you know, maybe take spray paint so you know where the original line is before you take the line that uh, flags out. And then put these about an, uh, a foot inside. So it's a little bit different location. They're a different color. And she can touch it without getting shocked. Yes, exactly. But we're, we're kind of, we're just basically moving the line a little bit inside. They give you a little bit of cushion. Um, and so that basically we're going to have her go up to it with the lead. She goes over, touches her nose, and then comes away. And then basically we've conditioned her to moving away from it is a positive thing and is rewarded. Now, underneath this video, I'm going to put kind of, I'm going to describe a little bit more of the details because again, we can only do so much with her right now because we're just teaching her how to do this. But the nice thing about this is a way to use positive dog training, positive reinforcement to get the dog to know what we want and do it because we, it wants to do it, not because it fears uh, a pain in the neck, because she's clearly indicated she doesn't care. She'll run through it and it only shocks for so long and then she's free and she does whatever she wants to do. So that tech, and I think a lot of it was again, we put the collar on, start using it inside the house right away. If you do use an e-collar or a shock collar, the dog should wear it for a month without any sensation whatsoever. No beeps, no sounds, no vibrations. So they just get used to that sensation of feeling it. Then when they do the wrong thing, then they get the beep or they get the tone or they get the shock and they associate the shock came when I crossed the line, not coming from my shock collar, if that makes sense. But again, I don't like using those, so if you, are, if you have a dog that doesn't do it, uh, doesn't go out of the yard or runs out of your yard, this is the proper way to do it, because again, the dog wants to do what you want. So this is how we can teach our dog to stay in the yard using positive reinforcement and a bunch of flags.